in your life. Good. Good morning, San Francisco. I am Lieutenant Jonathan Baxter, San Francisco Fire Department. Today, we are all gathered here to commemorate the kickoff of summer 2021. This summer is gonna be amazing. And I'm gonna say it's gonna be amazing over all the other years because we are going to be back. June 15th, we're gonna be able to be out and socializing. And we know you wanna to come to our coastline because it is beautiful and it is amazing and we have so much to offer. We want you to do that safely. Today, you're going to hear from many agency representatives who are going to provide you with essential safety material to keep you, your family, your loved ones, and your pets safe while visiting our coastline. First up, I would like to introduce our Golden Gate National Recreation Area Public Information Officer, Charles strick -Patton. Thanks, Lieutenant. From Maury Point to Stinson Beach, there is a ton to do at Golden Gate National Recreation Area, so we want you to plan like a park ranger this weekend. Golden Gate National Recreation Area is routinely one of the most visited units of the National Park Service with around 15 million visitors every year. We offer amazing experiences. We want you to have fun, make lifelong memories, and enjoy your outdoor spaces and visit this Memorial Day weekend. All of us here behind me and with me today want you to get back home safely after a fun weekend. It's our number one priority. Number two, be patient and flexible. The North Coast is a big place with a major city roads and parking lots are going to be jam-packed. Plan extra time and extra patience. Number three, if you see something, say something. You can help others by reporting unsafe situations to first responders. Number four, stay on trails and shores. Rip currents, rock scrambling, and walking off trail can be dangerous. Help us help you. Number five, swimming is strongly discouraged behind us at Ocean Beach due to the dangerous rip currents and cold temperatures. Even shallow water can be dangerous. Number six, take safe selfies. Watch your picture and your back. Number seven, be an early or late bird. Avoid crowds and traffic and visit non-peak hours. Number eight, warning signs like the ones behind me posted at the entrances to our beaches are there to help you make safe decisions on the coast. Number nine, appreciate the urban landscape. Use your best judgment with personal belongings. Avoid leaving valuables in unattended vehicles. And number 10, recreate responsibly. The health and safety of people visiting and working in the parks and coastal areas are our number one priority. Have a great weekend. Thank you, those are all some great tips. Lots of tips to remember. If you come out to the beach or our coastline and you don't remember these, please flag down any public safety personnel. We are friendly no matter what uniform we're wearing and we will give you some great tips if you forget these ones today. Next up for speaking for the San Francisco Fire Department is our Chief of Operations, Chief Brian Rubenstein. <laughs> Thank you, Lieutenant. I'd like to say I'm happy to be out here drilling with our co-responders. Drills like this go on all season to make this as safe a season as possible for you when you come to visit our beaches. Have a good day. Thank you, Chief. Next up is our representatives and our amazing partners in public safety from the United States Coast Guard, Chief Warrant Officer Zapala. Good morning, my name is uh, Chief Warrant Officer Leo Zapala, uh, representing the United States Coast Guard in the sector of San Francisco. I'm really passionate about ocean safety and I am very pleased to be speaking to you today from Ocean Beach in San Francisco. We Bay Area residents are blessed with an abundance of water access and there are a few things as wonderful as a day at the beach, recreational boating, surfing and other board sailing sports. Ocean safety starts at home. Know the conditions that, we will, that you will encounter when you go out. Area media outlets and the National Weather Service are great resources for planning your next visit. 
Not only will the weather tell you what kind of clothes to wear, they also post warnings such as when rip currents and dangerously high surf and waves will be expected. As we enter the boating season, I wanted to share with you some very startling statistics. Of the 613 deaths that have occurred in the maritime domain in the last year nationally, 79% of those boating deaths were drownings. 86% of those victims were not wearing their life jacket, and two-thirds of the drowning victims were described by their loved ones and friends as being strong swimmers. At the beach and along the shoreline, keep an eye on your loved ones and your friends. Never, ever turn your back on the ocean and be a good neighbor and tactfully remind others of this safety tip. Speaking of keeping your eye on the ocean, if you see someone who's in trouble and you should call 911 or call the Coast Guard directly, please remain at the scene. Keep your eyes locked on that person that you're reporting to be in distress until rescuers can arrive. You will literally take the search out of search and rescue and we'll be able to affect that rescue very quickly with first responders. When you are going out the water on a boat, make a plan. Leave that plan with someone at home. For example, I'm leaving this marina at 6 a.m. I'm going down to the San Mateo Bridge. I'm going to be fishing there until noon, and I'm going to return to the marina and expect to be off the water at 2. Leave also a description of what your boat looks like with those people ashore. Have all the safety equipment that you're required to have. Most importantly, wear an approved life jacket. Now, I understand that camouflage is a very attractive option. However, a very bright international orange life jacket with retroreflective tape and some type of sound signaling device and maybe a light source would make it a lot easier to find you in the water. I can't emphasize this enough. No matter how strong of a swimmer you are, this water is very cold. 50 degrees this morning. And regardless of how good of a swimmer you are, cold water shock can set in in a matter of minutes and you can lose your ability to swim. To put it simply, life jackets float. Folks who go out in the water and rely on cell phones. Cell phones are fantastic uh, on land, but not as effective when you're in the maritime environment. So please have a radio with you. It's a very effective and proven way to reach for help. Since April 1st of this year, federal regulations require that all mariners to have a kill switch on their vessel. For motorized boats that are uh, with three or more horsepower and less than 26 feet in length, and this regulation will be enforced this year. In closing, I look forward to seeing everyone have a, a safe and enjoyable summer. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with all of you about safety today, and I hope that we can collectively endeavor to be much safer on the water this year. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Warren Officer. And again, some very valuable tips. All these tips and all of us here today are here for one reason, and that's to be here for you to make sure that when you do come to our coastline, you're going to be safe. A majority of our coastal visitors are from outside of San Francisco. It may be triple digits at your home, and it's obvious we want to come to the beach and cool off and enjoy our companionship with our friends and neighbors and family and pets, but what you don't know sometimes is how cold the water actually is, even though it's very hot where you are at. So to speak on those demographics is our National Weather Service expert, Brian Garcia. Thanks, Lieutenant Baxter. My name is Brian Garcia. I am the Morning Coordination Meteorologist for the National Weather Service in the San Francisco Bay Area. I'm going to bookend my comments with this. Ocean Beach is beautiful. Come to our area beaches this summer. They're gorgeous. When you're at our area beaches, like you heard our Coast Guard partners say, it is very imperative that you take precautions. So there are multiple factors here, and Lieutenant Baxter hit on it again, and I'm going to hit on it a third time here. There is cold. So we're talking water temperatures in the low 50s just out here. So if you're not prepared to be in cold water, don't even think about going in the water here. Live to see another day. You'll see some rescue swimmers out here later. Those people are trained and they're in both uh, wetsuits and life jackets and we have a lot of eyes on them. So if you end up in the water, Typically, you end up in the water as an unintentional swimmer in areas like this, which means you're fully clothed. The water temperature will drain your body heat very fast, 
and you will go into what's called cold water paralysis. And if you think you're a good swimmer, forget it. You're no contest for the cold water because it'll seize up all your muscles. You won't even have a chance to go hypothermic. Unfortunately, it's more of a rescue mission from drowning as opposed to a recovery mission. So again, the, cold, the water is very cold. There are also rip currents and longshore currents. We hear about rip currents going straight out from the beach and you hear swim parallel to the coast. What you might see today is longshore currents as well, where you'll go out into the water, you'll get sucked out into the water and then get sucked down the beach. And it can happen in the matter of moments. You can be a half mile to a mile down the beach in tens of minutes. It's pretty quick, it's pretty rapid currents. The other threat here, of course, is very turbulent surf. So you'll see behind me, there's white water out there. That is not fluffy, friendly white water. It's actually very turbulent and it can churn you and roll you and get you disoriented to the point where it might be hard to come to the surface to get your breath. So all that to say, our beaches are gorgeous and when it becomes sunny and beautiful at the beach, there's literally no place like Ocean Beach when it's gorgeous out. And when we go on holiday weekends, I know that you all want to come to the beach, please do so. Please come, please hang out, please enjoy your time at the beach. Do so carefully, respectfully, and friendly with each other. And most of all, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and be good to each other. Thanks. Thank you, Brian Garcia. Again, we can't do our job without the assistance of all the individual agencies behind us. One thing that we all have in common is we're responders. We respond when you call 911. What do you do? What do you say? What do you need to have prepared? If your friend gets caught in a sneaker wave, gets pulled out in a rip current, if your dog goes over a cliff, well, here to give you information on that is one of our 911 dispatch supervisors, Justin Wong from the Department of Emergency Management. Thank you, Lieutenant Baxter. I have some tips for if or when you have to call 911. And I'll start off by talking about TVs and movies have kind of taught us this myth um, that's wrong, that all you need to do is call 911 and click hang, hang up. And instead, when you call 911, the dispatcher is going to ask you a series of questions and then give you a set of instructions. And the very first, most important question we're going to ask is what is the exact location of the emergency? Because oftentimes we don't know exactly where you are. Out here on the beach, we might ask you what stairwell you're close to, or what's the closest intersection that you're at, or what your land, how close you are to the closest landmark, or a thousand feet south of the cliff house, or a hundred feet north of the paraglider launch, or 200 feet south of the sand stairs. Knowing the exact location helps us locate and where to send help. After that, keep an eye on the victim. The current's gonna take the victim in a different direction, or better yet, assign a friend or somebody else to keep an eye on the victim and don't lose sight of them. Don't enter the water and don't try to rescue them yourself. If you're able to safely throw a floating object at them, do so and remain on the line and follow all of the instructions the dispatcher will ask. We'll start by asking what the victim looks like, including a clothing description, the number of victims, and what direction they're being taken. If you stay on the line, we will get you help. I'd also like to take a moment to mention that we are able to provide 911 services in different languages. If you don't speak English as your first language, we are happy to help you. All you need to do is call 911 and say what language you need. That might be Spanish or Cantonese or Mandarin or Russian. After you say what language you need, just remain on the line. It's going to take us a minute to find someone who can translate for you, but don't hang up. We'll get you somebody that can help speak your language. thing I'd like to mention is flag down the first responders when we get there and point out which direction we're looking for. Um, and this is a great opportunity for also for you to teach your kids about how to call 911 in the event of emergency. Thank you. All right, well, we've got a wealth of safety information for you to kind of divulge right there. This is, again, all for your safety. We want to encourage you to visit our website sf-fire.org for safety information we have all the information that all these agencies 
provided to you today on that website. You can also follow the San Francisco Fire Department on Twitter at SFFDPIO, where we weekly post safety information related to coastal safety, among other topics. Now, we are going to show you what it takes to rescue an individual from the water. We have our partners from the Sonoma County Sheriff's Department 10 Henry 1 Rescue Helicopter in route. They'll be coming from the north here any minute, and they're going to show you what it takes to effect that rescue. Some of the cameras want to get up a little bit closer. We're more welcome to do that, but what we're going to see is we're going to see our rescue swimmers attached to our rescue water um, response vehicles, Surf Rescue 34, Surf Rescue 18, Coastal Rescue uh, Units, and our partners with the National Park Service Ocean Patrol.
Yeah. <laughs>